Hi, this is Jose Simic from Jepsoft. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the exciting new features we are adding to Ginex Pro Tools 4.3. So let's start by creating a new run. Let's press the button new here at the top, and we are going to call this run Breast Cancer. And that is because we will be using the UCI's Breast Cancer dataset to create some models to uh, diagnose breast cancer. Now, this is a classification problem, so we need to select uh, classification as the run category and since uh, we have the Excel, the data sets, um, the data, both data sets compiled in an Excel file, I'll select Excel here and press next. To load the, the Excel file we need to press that button here at the top and you can see that uh, here that we've added support for the latest versions of Excel. And I'm going to browse for the file, let's browse for the file and press OK. Okay, we have here the training set and the testing set. And Ginexpo Tools identified the, 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 the correct worksheet as the training set and loaded the columns here at the bottom. So I only need to press load to load the data. Now, we need to create a testing set. We need to have a testing set to check the uh, generalization power of our models. And to do that, we need to repeat the process, repeat this, this process. So let's press next. Select the Excel file. We don't need to browse for it now because it's already here. Press OK. And again, Ginexpo Tools found the word test in one of the worksheets. So it listed the columns here. And again, I only need to press load to load the data. Let's press finish. And we are going to save our JEP file. And here we are. Now, here we are in the uh, run panel. This is where all the action happens. And since we are going to uh, use the default, the default parameters, uh, we, are, we can just press start to start the run. And uh, let's do it. And let's look here at the top. We have the usage map. Now the usage map shows which, uh, which variables are being used in the um, evolving models. We, we improved it a little bit. So now it is easier to distinguish between the number of um, times the, the variable is being used. So now we have this one here, which is probably two, and this one, which is one, because it's lighter, and the dark one, which would be three. Now this, this chart here at the, top, at the bottom <coughs> is one of the exciting new features in Ginex Tools 4.3. It is called the Classification Tapestry, and shows at a glance what kind of models are being created by the algorithm. Now both sides show all the records, all the patients, and, but on the left, in color, we see the patients that do not have cancer, and on the right, also in color, we have the patients that have cancer. On both sides, the pink squares represent the patients um, uh, that, are, uh, that are being properly classified, and the red squares are the patients that are uh, being misclassified. Now, as you'd expect, that this ties in with the confusion matrix. So we have six uh, false positives here in the confusion matrix, which match these six squares here on the left, and the 16 <coughs> false negatives here on the right on the confusion matrix, which also match uh, the square, uh, the red squares here on the right. Now, if you look here at the bottom, you'll see that we are using the dual margin fitness function. And um, this is one of the new fitness functions added uh, to Ginexpo tools. This is an area of great improvement in this version, as we now have several fitness functions that optimize the margins of the classifiers much more efficiently. And you see that straight away by looking here at the change rate, which shows the number of uh, model improvements so far. You can expect uh, in GeneXpo Tools 4.3 to have much longer histories with a lot more models for you to choose from. Okay, so let's let's go. Let's let's now uh, see a couple of new charts that uh, we added to logistic regression. And the shortest way to get there is to convert this classification run into a logistic regression run. So let's stop the run, let's save it, and let's convert it to logistic regression. We need to give it a different name, so I'll just append logistic regression here, press save again, and uh, of course the, these charts are available here in the run panel, but first let's have a look at the performance of our model in the results panel. So we have here our model, the, the raw data, not the crisp classification values, but we are interested more on the charts at the moment. 
And there we go. Uh, so this is the one of the new shells, the binomial feed by model. And at the top it shows the patients that have cancer, and at the bottom it shows the patients this uh, <coughs> yellow, um, these orange boxes, these orange uh, dots show the patients that do not have uh, cancer. Now we have the model here in the middle, in green, and the inflection, the inflection point of this curve is the rounding threshold, or represents the rounding threshold. And anything to the right of the rounding threshold at the top are uh, uh, patients that have cancer that are being properly classified. And to the left of the, round, of the rounding threshold at the bottom are patients that are not uh, that uh, do not have the disease, are free of the disease. These records here on the uh, top left and at the bottom right are patients that are not that are being misclassified by the current model. Another interesting view to this data is the binomial fit by target. Here we can see very clearly where the rounding threshold is, and to the right we have the patients that uh, have cancer, and to the left we have the patients that do not have cancer. These uh, spikes here, uh, this one here that, and these ones here at the, at the bottom, represent the records of the patients that are being misclassified by the current model. Okay, we should also check out this model in the logistic regression platform. Uh, actually, no, before we do that, we should go to the brain and see these uh, charts in action. So we are here back and uh, I'll press continue to continue so you can see, have an idea of what information uh, the chart gives you during the run. So this is the bin binomial feed by model. And now I'm going to change to, let's change to binomial feed by targets. So as I, I was going to do before, uh, <clears throat> let's, let's go and check this model in the logistic regression platform. Just press here. And here we are. There aren't uh, uh, many changes on these screens um, here. We have the, the same charts and data that we had before, but we did, it, we did do a reasonable amount of work in the uh, calculations, so we can expect the calculations here to be much faster, much faster than they used to be before. And let's go, let's go back. Okay, so continue. Uh, we, we should go and uh, get our classification run that we created before. So uh, let's go to the home. A panel and select the previous uh, classification run we did before. And uh, we need to select the best model. So we go to the history and uh, we are going to test all the models. And you can also see that again it's much faster than before in the processing here. Let's sort it by testing accuracy. Select the model we want to keep and choose keep selected models. Okay, now and let's go back. Let's go back to the brand. So I show you the this new feature called unattended brands. Now unattended brands, it's a feature that lets you create a number of independent brands without manual intervention. It's and, and it's very easy to use. You just need to choose generation number here. You need to write the number of generations you want each run to process. And for the sake of uh, time, let's only choose uh, five independent brands to create five independent brands. And let's press start. So Genexpo Tools is creating those five runs. And as you can see, even with those these short runs, uh, it, the algorithm can uh, find very good models uh, given the, the, the complexity of this problem. And we are now into our last run. OK, let's have a look at what happens. Let's go to the history. And we can see that we have this uh, the model that we kept before. And now we have five more histories of 100 generations, like this one here, or this one here, each with a, a reasonable amount of uh, models that were created by, by the unattended run. Again, we are only interested on the best models. So let's do a quick sort here and select the best models and just delete all the others. Okay, now this is, uh, this, this is part of the features uh, of the model management um, uh, features we introduced, uh, such as the keep selected model that you've seen so far. And the very cool one, it's the import models. So you can now import models from external brands. And I'm going to select this brand, which I prefer prepared before, and press open. And there you go. Uh, we have all the models that are available from on that brand. And uh, we can see here that that model, we have some information here about the, the structure of the models on that run, and it, it is compared with the 
the structure of the models of our run. And you can see everything's in, in green because they are compatible. And if something is not compatible, then you'll see it in here in red. It is highlighted here in red, in red so you can go back and uh, fix it if, if possible. Now here I'm only inter I'm interested on importing all the runs, all the five runs. So I just press the button import all and press close. And as you can see, now we have a seventh history with the models that came from that uh, external run. Since we have so many runs, let's let's check them out in the results screen. So let's go to the results screen and to the charts. Now, if I wanted to visualize, I want to visualize these uh, all these runs. Oh, sorry, all these models. And before you had to go back and forth between the history panel and the results panel, but not anymore. You have this very nice feature here at the top, which just by pressing this button, you can change the current model. So it's quite easy now to visualize the differences from model to model just by pressing this button. Now this is also available in the model uh, panel. So we can again uh, check uh, um, compare uh, codes as we as we scroll through the current models or we can compare the structure and let's zoom out a little bit here to have a better view and off we go we can uh, look at the structure of different of the different models um, okay so let's go back to the history okay so we we you could use any obviously you can use any of these models to create, uh, to, to make predictions predictions using uh, for new data, or you could make an ensemble. But now with GeneXplot Tools 4.3, you can make an ensemble automatically. And it's very easy, again, you just, here in the history, you need to do right click and choose Deploy Ensemble to Excel. Now these are all the metal models of this, um, this run, but for the sake of the presentation, I'm only going to select the runs that we created using the unattended runs feature. So I'll just select them and, I, and uh, press deploy and we can accept this name, uh, the, the name and Schnexpo tool is creating an Excel file and adding a bunch of information to it. And I'll bring it forward to show you the, that, uh, to show it to you. And the first uh, worksheet has the, contains the, um, uh, the training sets. And if we scroll to the right, we can also see that it contains all the models that were deployed. And since it's, this is a classification ensemble, we get uh, the prob probabilities here for free and we get the majority vote model, right, for the ensemble. Uh, and this majority vote model uh, aggregates all the individual models that we deployed. Now, if we look closely into the model calculation, you'll notice that these models are being calculated in Excel. And this is quite an important feature because it means that this spreadsheet is independent of GeneXpo tools. You can use these spreadsheets uh, and deploy it or, and integrate it with your systems and your processes uh, without having to deal directly with the, with the model codes. That way you'll be able to, we believe that you'll be able to save uh, a reasonable amount of uh, resources and time uh, to go from modeling into production. And the way that that's possible is because GeneXpo tools uh, in, uh, inserted the model the model code into these spreadsheets and to show you that let's go into the developer tab and press visual basic okay you see you've got the models of the ensemble here on the left and we have one of them we have the code for one of those models here integrated with excel so let's go back and um, okay so we have a little bit more information here on the right so we have the classification accuracy and error and we also have uh, the best model. We also show which one is the best model uh, for the ensemble. If you select the, uh, the, the enough models and the right kind of models, then the majority vote model would have been the, the best model. The next worksheet is exactly the same thing, but for the testing set. And then we have this, uh, this other one called scoring example, which is a very useful one. And what this does is it allows you to um, to to, to make predictions for, for your data. And we're going to do just that because we have some patient data here. So there you go, we've got some new patient data. I'm going to select all the data. Uh, okay, let's go. Select all the data. Copy it. And paste it into Excel. 
and just scroll to the right and now we just need to grab this example and drag it down and there you go we have just classified all this data using the ensemble now let's go back to GeneXport tools and okay so you can um, as, as I showed you just now you can uh, export an, an ensemble but you can also export a single a single model and to show you that let's go to the logistic regression brand we created before so let's select these two here and make sure that the last one is the current model that's correct the last model is the current model and again we just right click and select deploy model to excel we are going to accept the let's accept the uh, the defaults press ok we can also accept the name as it is and again we have an excel file which we can bring forward and the training set is exactly the same but for a single model but and but the, the reason i am uh, showing you this is because this is a logistic regression run so if we go into the codes of the model we see that we are deploying now here at the bottom the complete logistic model including the slope the intercept and the probabilities and uh, again this is one more feature that we think is going to save you a reasonable amount of time and reduce the complexity for deploying the models uh, created in GeneXport tools and we can go back to GeneXport tools and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, you can uh, try all these new features by downloading the demo of GeneXport tools 4.3 which you can install next to GeneXport tools 4.0 and if you have any questions, drop us an email uh, at uh, support at